Sun City, an active new way of life. It's like a resort. It was back in 1961 that American retirees were first offered a new concept of living to escape the drudgery of old age. With the promise of stress-free communal living and a healthy lifestyle, Sun City was the first retirement village of its kind. There they were, looking 10 years younger than when I last saw them. 53 years on, the sales pitch hasn't changed, but Sun City has, growing to become one of the largest retirement communities in the world. You can see we have two libraries, seven recreation centers, and most impressively, 30 churches. My goodness, that's a lot of churches. Yes, it is. I've come here to assess if communities like Sun City and the active lifestyles they provide slow down the aging process. Bill Pearson is a former union organizer who retired here a few years back. What studies have shown is that people that are engaged in the process of growing old, staying active, staying connected, being linked to other people, ultimately find a less stressful way of living. Okay, you tell me when. For Dr. Jeffrey Life, a peaceful retirement at Sun City is the furthest thing from his mind. He's almost 75 with the physical stamina of a man less than half his age. Although he knows he's getting older, Dr. Life, a practicing physician, spends little time thinking about death. He's too busy staying young. Four, five, switch, one, two. People say, why do you do that? Well, I like it, but then I thought, you know, I do it because I can. Most people in their 30s and 40s can't do that. I can. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Life. I've been a doctor for 35 years. You may have seen my pictures in national publications and wondered if they're real. Well, I'm here to tell you they are real. Dr. Life, and that's his real name, is a celebrity. He's a specialist in a fast-growing field of medicine. He calls it age management. I, I think it's important for people to know today that they don't have to follow the same path that their parents did, that they don't have to age like their parents. Believe me, it can work for you too. It's not just a great body that Dr. Life is offering. There's a bonus that goes with all that youthful energy. My libido was like I was 18 again. So the desire is there constantly. All the time. <laughs> but there's more to Dr. Life's therapy than simply diet and exercise. It's a cocktail of drugs that's highly controversial. Dr. Life instructs his patients to inject themselves with human growth hormone, or HGH, and testosterone, a potent combination he believes staves off disease. Low testosterone levels contribute to vascular disease, so we believe that uh, 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 correcting testosterone deficiencies and growth hormone deficiencies and the right nutrition and exercise can reverse plaque and that's what we aggressively do. And in my case, that's exactly what's happened. Dr. Life claims that he's living proof that maintaining optimum hormone levels really works. His story of how hormones changed his life has resulted in two books and a stint on the New York Times bestsellers list. This is about, honest to God, genuine health. We've been treating thyroid deficiencies for decades because we know it improves people's quality of life improves their longevity. So why not do it with the other hormones? On the lake of the Ozarks in the south of Missouri, wealthy Americans from all over the Midwest spend their summers on this man-made water park. 
Meet the Clips. Steve Clip, 70, and his wife Shirley, 67. I'm going to live longer than just 10 more years. You know, I'm not going to take that dial and turn it on and say, tick, 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 tick. in 10 more years, you're going to be dead. Well, I'm not going to have that happen. For more than a decade, the Kleps have been injecting themselves with human growth hormone. They say it has changed their lives. It kind of kickstarts your your body, you know, it's just like boom. Right. You just it just really kicks it up. You can take all these things, and they're going to help you, but they're not nearly going to help you as much as when your HGH is in balance and it's, it has the level that it needs to be at. So that's the point of the HGH. It makes it's sort of the master catalyst that makes all the rest work. To its optimum. As the owners of a 28-store food franchise in Arizona, Steve and Shirley admit they're well off, which is just as well because HGH doesn't come cheap. This is an expensive program, I'm sorry, in anybody's book. No matter what part of it, you, you, if you do any of it close to what you need to do, you're talking, you know, thousands of dollars a month. Feeling 30 years younger has enabled Shirley to pursue her dreams of success in the male-dominated sport of motor racing. No mean feat for a woman in her late 60s. I spend no money on going to doctors. Can you imagine the amount of money people spend going to doctors and hospitals and medicine? We don't do that. Steve is aware that hormone replacement therapy is widely criticised by the medical establishment, but he says they've got it wrong. As it grows in popularity, if that's the right word for it, uh, it's going to change the mind of some of the more conservative medical people, I believe. It has to. These uh, individuals who run these anti-aging clinics, who I consider to be charlatans and hucksters, you know, uh, are selling an effect at a very high price. And, uh, and there's a population out there that says, hey, who wouldn't want to be young? At Cedars-Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, Dr. Glenn Braunstein is a tough critic of doctors who offer hormone replacement therapy as a way to prevent aging. They're potentially giving harmful drugs for very little benefit, at a great expense, and they're taking advantage of people's uh, desire to try to feel younger. Dr. Braunstein is an endocrinologist, an expert on the subject of human hormones. He's dismayed at the growing popularity of anti-aging medicine, and the specialists, he says, are bringing the field of endocrinology into disrepute. I can say that uh, I am ashamed when I hear of an endocrinologist, a real board-certified endocrinologist, staffing an anti-aging clinic. Oh, we, we actually have uh, two endocrinologists on our board, and they uh, uh, oversee what we do. And when we do this special testing for growth hormone deficiency, call a glucagon stimulation test, we send those results to a, our endocrinologist and she determines from the results if this patient is truly growth hormone deficient. Human growth hormone is produced in the pituitary gland and it's vital for healthy development. Some children fail to produce the hormone and without intervention will have stunted growth. They're given synthetic HGH to allow them to develop normally. The main reason why I know so much about growth hormone is that I had to give it to my son. I injected him daily for, it must have been five, six years, because he was growth hormone deficient. So for him, growth hormone was needed to achieve normal adult height. Professor Jay Olshansky knows that HGH can be a very useful drug. It helped his son. But for him, the jury is still out on whether it's safe to use as an anti-aging drug. There's a potential danger when you introduce growth hormone into an aging body. It's a growth agent. 
our cells are progressing, many of our cells uh, in our body are progressing towards becoming cancerous. So the last thing you want to do is introduce a growth agent into a body where more cells are progressing or have progressed towards a cancerous stage. Dr. Life checks his new patients to measure their existing levels of HDH and testosterone. This is what we do on all of our patients. Levels of these hormones start falling as we get older. That's normal. But Dr. Life believes that the aging process can be slowed by topping up these hormones with injections. US law says it's illegal to prescribe hormone therapy to counter the effects of aging, but not if it's only to correct a deficiency. The question is, what's a deficiency? And it's funny you would mention top up because what's top up for you uh, and what's top up for me may be two totally different things, even if we're the same age. And here's the dilemma, is that the, 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 the people who are, are trying to top off the hormones whether it be testosterone or growth hormone or whatever it is that they're administering melatonin, they actually don't know what the hormone level was for that person when they were younger. For decades, bodybuilders and athletes have known that hormone cocktails, including HGH, can improve performance. Many of the scandals in the world of sport have arisen from the illegal use of these drugs. We've got the athletes that have abused these hormones. And so people think that uh, testosterone replacement therapy or growth hormone replacement therapy is bad. And uh, they think of it in terms of what the athletes have done. They don't think of it in terms of improving their health, keeping them out of nursing homes. They don't think of it like that. They need to start thinking of it like that. Like the rest of us, movie stars grow old and die. But at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, long gone legends of the stage and screen live on in grandeur. The movie business is obsessed with youth and good looks. So it's not surprising that here in Los Angeles, the anti-aging industry has found a wealthy client base hungry for its product. Uh, this is where we keep our HGH. We like to keep it cool. It's Dr. Alex Martin's clinic is in the heart of Hollywood. And, uh, he calls it the Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And top of the list for the drugs he prescribes is HGH. And if you look at the tip, you'll see a drop of human growth hormone coming out. And as I push the button, you'll see a drop on the tip and it falls off. So that's how it, it's delivered. It's quite ingenious and uh, quite uh, effective. It's a very, very small amount then that is used, is it? Uh, it looks like a very small amount. It looks like a tiny drop, but that drop contains millions, I'm sorry, billions of molecules and enough to be carried by the microcirculation to every cell of the body. Like so most other anti-aging doctors, five, Dr. Martin two, practices what he prescribes. On and so on and so forth. I personally uh, have been uh, uh, using human growth hormone for the past 12 years. And I'm in my late 60s. I ski like a 40-year-old. So we're living in a wonderful time, fabulous time, because we're on a, in a golden age in so many of the sciences, from astronomy through medicine. And uh, I, I think it would be great to be able to see the end of the century. Do I think the anti-aging industry is going to one day find uh, you know, or perform a really well-validated study that's going to show that testosterone, DHEA, and growth hormone reverse the aging process? Absolutely not. Bit of a delay in there, Mr. Stallone? Yeah. Clearly, some aging movie stars are convinced that the fountain of youth is in a syringe. In February 2007, Sylvester Stallone was grilled by customs officers at Sydney Airport after a Rambo-sized cache of HGH was discovered in his luggage. Nick Nolte and Oliver Stone are among other Hollywood celebrities linked to the HCH health fad. But if extra years are what they're after, Jay Olshansky says they're wasting their time. Everyone who is a patient in one of these clinics will die. They will all age, they will all grow old, they will all experience the same diseases as the rest of us, and they will all die. All cat, all the time. Very nice.
Back at Sun City, I've caught up again with retiree Bill Pearson. He's invited me to meet his two best mates. Got a chance here, mate. Like many Sun City residents, these baby boomers are hoping for a long and comfortable retirement, and maybe hormone replacement therapy is the way to go. If it allows me to pay taxes longer, I'm all for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Over the years, I, I think it does something to your body. Nobody knows what yet because I don't think it's been researched that far. For Bill, it's not a question of risk or efficacy, but rather price. Uh, did some research, uh, liked a lot of what I read. I was intrigued by the idea of uh, the potential of, you know, regaining my youth. <laughs> uh, I just found the cost to be prohibitive. I mean, you know, you, you start looking at uh, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars a year. Uh, it just gets expensive. It's estimated that 76 million Americans are facing retirement over the next decade. There's no doubt that hormone replacement therapy will look very appealing to many of them if they can afford it. Whether or not it can turn back the clock, it's a rapidly growing branch of medicine and a gold mine for the drug companies. I do think that we should have a really honest discussion about this. And the honest discussion is that there's really no major benefit. There are risks of side effects. It will not deliver what the uh, anti-aging -aging industry has said it will deliver. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it's, uh, they're expensive. We have the ability today to not follow the same aging pathway that our ancestors did. My whole mission is for each and every one of us to die at a very, very old age.